Hello, welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 14, the big three, Halo, Zelda and God of War. What's next? With me, George, and as always joined by Tom, Holy Trinity, to my three amigos. (laughs) Tom, how's it going? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Excellent. Recently, we've been doing some housekeeping, just to let new listeners, Mm -hmm. and we've attracted another wave. Yeah. Old listeners probably getting bored of hearing about these ways. <laughs> uh, but we'll just give you a quick rundown. So we start off with what you've been playing, then into the news, then into the feature, which this week is the big three, Halo, Zelda, and God of War, what's next? The reason why you turned up. Then to listener Stingray, hashtag Stingray's boot. Then to the big man himself, the immortal Stingray with the new releases. And then I asked Tom casually what he's hoping to play. And if he remembers, he asked me what I'm hoping to play. I try to be polite, but... Uh... It sometimes slips my memory. He's not got it in him. And then we sign <laughs> off the show, in and out, just like that. Tom, as I've already informed the listeners, and the old listeners are already getting ready for this, you've dusted off the key, you've put it in lock, you've turned. Give us the show, Tom. What have you been playing? This week I've been playing... Uh, well, you left the bunker, didn't you, to go and watch some baseball this Well, week? it looked like we were in London watching the baseball, but I was actually down the local village watching Chris McClum. Do a bit of rounders? Play a bit of rounders, yeah. I, I hear he can knock it out of the park and, and get round the whole ring, whatever you want to call it. Oh, there's a fan of the sport, if ever. <laughs> yeah, well, it was him, his team, versus Finster Gamers CEX Raiders. Awesome. Yeah, and Chris McClum's Retro Ravagers. Oh. I don't know what that's all about, but it was a great day out, and yeah. Chris McClum scored a couple of home runs. I think that's the word you're not looking for. Met it's a couple got... of fans of the show. Yeah. Natural, very nice. Uh, well, I was also with a couple of listeners while you were out the bunker, uh, Pez and NSP. We uh, had ourselves a little switch night of multiplayer games. Uh, also tried out Cadence of Hyrule. Um, bring your mates round. Get round. Bring all your multi-taps. Bring your new controllers. Gather round, watch me play Cadence of Hyrule. How did that, that is work a solid out? game. <laughs> uh, so we tried... Multiplayer? The- yeah, it's got a co-op mode. We tried that. I didn't know. Um, yeah, really tough. Is it a good game? Yeah, I was really impressed. Soundtrack is awesome as I expected. So is it just like it's like a it's like a link to a, a link to the past? Let, let me see if I can run you through a simulation. Do, 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 do. And each yeah. one of those you're moving forward, and you've got to. Press yeah, it's got it the grid time. system. Um, do, 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 do. And How do yeah. You hit? Do you have to hit in time with the if, sword if, swoosh? If you move in time... Are you in, in control of this character? Yeah. If you move towards the enemy at the correct time, to the correct beat, you'll do a sword attack, destroying the enemy, or maybe... So there's taking... only one way through this game in a perfect run. Everyone's playthrough would look the same, wouldn't it? No, because the maps are uh, generated differently every time. So you're in a How does that map. work with the music? How does it know it's like 15 steps to the first enemy? How does it know it's 10 steps to the next... It's Dawn. very hard to explain, but it's impressive. It it looked really good, and this isn't a love like no, it's love, not a review. Leave or lair. I'll remember the name of our own sections in good time, listeners. Probably episode three thousand. I'll get it right. But Tom, if you're a fan of Zelda and you're looking for a challenge, uh, I think you should take a look at it. Really good. Um, we moved on to play some Crash Team Racing online. Uh, not online, like a uh, couch co-op. Um, and it doesn't run quite as smooth as the single player, which is to be expected. Mm. And my friends felt it was a little bit of a poor man's Mario Kart. Some would say they're not wrong. Mm. Some would say. Uh, then you on ever, to... Hang on a minute, listeners. It's time Tom got some splinters in his backside. Crash Tag Team Racing versus the Immortal Mario Kart... But we're going to go with the eighth iteration, so it's like for like. Yeah. Fresh candy for fresh candy. Which one are you nibbling on the back of the school bus? Um, last week I said Crash Team Racing, but this week 
after playing the multiplayer together with friends, I'd say Mario Kart's probably stronger for that side of it. Ever the populist man. Sitting on a fence. Going where the fans are until they move somewhere <laughs> else. and then It's days that, gone that by month. all over again. Literally. And speaking of days gone by, we fired up uh, the arcade uh, challenge mode that was recently released as free DLC. Um, and... That was cool. That was great to play with two friends, just taking it in turns, seeing how many zombies we could get through and chain the uh, the multiplier together and Freakies. get a bit further. I know. Said you were a fan there. of the game. Freak. Yeah, but they're zombies as well. No, mate, then everything freakers. else is now freak. Okay, yeah. right. Well, Thank you for the correction. Freakers. Yeah. Um, but Night yeah, that, that was enjoyable. Freakers. Okay. Played some Street Fighter Five on the PS4, uh, some Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, what else? You've been playing more games this week than Finster the game. Yeah, Checking for scratches it's, it's kind of like discs. sort of going through the classics. We didn't have time for any Mario Tennis Aces this week, which we usually play. We try and progress in the online tournament, usually get too far and then bottle it. I've got some but news for you. We're going to be discussing that in the news, aren't we? Yes. Is that uh, you well, Yeah, or I'll, I'll finish off through? at that. I mean, you start with A and we're down to like, F of games in yeah the of a lot of games this week I need to be polite and ask you what have you been playing Tom don't feel like you have to although you know it's part of the script so I'm <laughs> going to cut in with I finished Shakedown Hawaii whoa just got to go through completionist and, I know just got to go through and um, arrange some protection rackets on some other on some other properties so they sell to me so I can buy them all uh, that would unlock another two. And I think I'm pretty yeah. much done there. I've, I will have totally done all of that. That was a great game. That was a good game. It had all the things in it that make a game good. It was pick up and play. It was, you know, not too difficult, but there's a challenge And you've been there. playing this on the Vita, haven't you? Both. Well, so yeah. I'll cross save so the, to the cloud, and yeah. then when I play it on the PS4, I just pick up where I left off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible. And I didn't realise when I put it down last... That I was literally probably a minute away from finishing the game, <laughs> finishing the game. So I loaded it the other day and just ran through that last bit and cleaned up some areas that I needed to do and unlocked those final trophies before yeah. the, the last haul. Done a little bit more days gone, much like you. I'm making the Easter chocolate last all year, Tom. <laughs> um, it's the game that keeps on giving, isn't it? I really, I really can't get enough of that game. You'll enjoy the arcade mode, I think. It's I'm just looking. A... I want to just get it done now. Yeah. But I'm really looking every time I go on there. Well, it seems like they're going to be adding um, something either every week or every month to this. Um, to the challenge of, section. Yeah, the it. challenge yeah. section of the game. And I see there's actually trophies linked to the completion of that challenge mode as well. Yeah, I picked one up on Saturday night. Uh, or we did as a as a group of three trying to... Bring the game of monkeys around, make yeah. your trophies look a little bit better, Tom. <laughs> yep. Uh, Surprise so... you're not down the uh, local dodgy employment agency seeing if you can get some uh, Polish guys to come up and work the Xbox or PlayStation <laughs> while you're out during the day oh remember those achievement days of why have you bought King Kong that's an easy thousand G you snake when you employed Boris that works for Andy down on the market for 24 yeah. hours to try and unlock all your games Avatar that was another one Avatar yeah, thousand G Tom, I must stop you. Yep. It's time to get on with this seriously average, serious games news show and push into the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, wake up, Alan. Sony's at the door. Remedy Entertainment could be preparing itself to bring its beloved franchise, Alan Wake, multi-format, as it's acquired rights to its own property, Alan Wake, in a deal with Microsoft costing 2.5 million euros. Still, right now, Remedy are busy bringing their new IP control to the market. We are sure we'll hear more from them once that's done. Tom, over there in the black dress, I've said it many times, is a game that not many people understand. It's sharing hors d'oeuvres with L.A. Noir. It's Alan Wake. She's got a funky David Bowie soundtrack. People don't yeah. understand her, but she's a beautiful game. And I want her remastered. Yeah, I'd like to see the re make sure it is a sort of remaster. No um, offence to Remedy. New IP control. That looks quite good. Just give me Alan Wake. For goodness <laughs> sake. And the sequel, possibly. Oh, please, no. The man can dream. The man can dream. Who would have thought that you come up with a game, you design the whole IP yourself, and you still got to give Microsoft two and a half million? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's a, that's a that's an expensive child in a divorce, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What have you got is. for me next, Tom? Uh, served nothing but sand and dry bone. I like what you've done there. Dry Bowser has hopped into the roster of Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, revealed to be a defensive character, Dry Bowser looks just as powerful as it, as you'd imagine. Uh, shown in the trailer, um, it showed off his standard trick, standard shots, trick shot, and special shot, and also confirms exactly how you can get your hands on the character for yourself. Um, an in-game tournament is now live for the duration of July, as with every other month, which will give you the chance to obtain Dry Bowser early. Um, which is usually the case. Um, otherwise, you have to wait till he's um, been released uh, after the tournament. Uh, he'll be available for all players starting from next month as well. Hot news, though. The start of July means that Fire Piranha Plant is now available to all as well. So someone like me who didn't get it at the beginning of the month because I'm just... Yeah, so games. you can either try and win it in the tournament or you can just wait and it'll be available the month after. Everyone wins a prize, much like a modern day sports day, Tom. Mm -hmm. That's the Nintendo way. Everyone's a winner. Let me say one thing. This last bit of news, Tom. I turn my back from the green screen for two seconds and you've managed to cram Link, God of War, and this god-awful Overwatch news. Uh, Hit me up. Goats get smashed. Uh, for those of you that know about Overwatch, this will make perfect sense. For the other 4,999 of us, you know, just sit back and relax for a little while. Blizzard plans to open up the Overwatch League Stale 3 3 Goats meta, a composition of three tanks and three supports, by introducing a roll lock that forces teams to pick two DPS heroes, two support, and two tanks, according to the reports. Esports site Upcomer reported on the roll lock earlier this week, citing multiple sources inside the Overwatch League. Blizzard will introduce the lock at the start of the current season's fourth stage, which begins in July, the report said. This was echoed echoed by ex-Overwatch pro Bayek Fisher, Chan Hung, who played main tank for the Seoul Dynasty before announcing his decision to leave the sport. In a follow-up stream, Fisher claimed that the 2-2-2 roll lock had already been decided for stage four, I'm retired now, uh, so I'll say it. Next stage, stage four, 222 lock is decided, he said. And that's according to multiple translations of this clip. While some players might not like the change, it should be a good thing for the viewers. Tom, I read that out. I think it made sense. Explain it to me. It was read out very well. Made perfect sense to me and the few other Overwatch fans we have on the, uh, from the podcast. You, Lord um, Ponceroy and Wayne Ray. That's it. They're big fans. I've got them in the team and everything. We run the GOATS meta, uh, so we're pretty disappointed. Um, Yeah, speaking of that, I think we've had bad... Well, they've had bad feedback from viewers because they feel like the the GOATS team is so overpowered and it's played every game and they say it's boring to watch, so they're trying to mix it up a bit and say, right, that's no longer available. We're just going to run the... Two DPS, two healers, and two tanks. Um, so hopefully What's that's me. Greatest of all time. Do you know? I thought, listeners, for a moment, I thought it was one of those moments. I believe that's what it means. Say, I just, I just, I don't know. I just say on the mic, "Do you want to run go. goats? I, do you want to run goats? Yeah, everyone knows what goats all is. All the bigger boys are saying it on the Overwatch League. So Tom says, "Let's run goats." It's really bad, but I'm a massive Overwatch fan. I don't watch the league. So when I'm on the mic and people are saying, oh, did you see that latest game with London Spitfires against Seoul Dynasty? Nope, didn't see it. I've no idea what he's talking about. before Mumsy calls time on the podcast because even she can't indulge your Overwatch (laughs) obsessions this much. And considering that more than likely between here and the end of the show, there's a mention for... In fact, I know that in the script there's a mention of Red Dead Redemption. You couldn't help yourself. So God of War, Red Dead Redemption... Overwatch, your Holy Trinity. Tom? Ticking all the boxes. If the Holy Trinity isn't serving me today and providing me with nothing more than a substandard podcast, how would the fans get in touch and tell us how how amazed they are at this Overwatch? And let's face it, white hot gaming news. 
as always, as some of you have this week, uh, you can reach us on questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Mm. It was great to have some feedback on that. Um, yeah. Or direct messages on Instagram or Twitter. Or you can find our YouTube page um, and comment on the uh, post there. And remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, because we did actually get uh, some emails this week, which is great news for me. Uh, a little bit unfortunate because I've used that email to sign into all sorts of questionable sites. And then when I got we got mail, we panicked. We nearly deleted it because we didn't want Mumsy to see. But actually, listener mail, which was wonderful to receive, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that in the future. Okay. Some of those emails. Well, do you know what, listeners? We've slipped, jumped, hopped and skipped our way all the way to the feature. The big three feature feature halo zelda god of war what's next this week's feature is discussion around the big three characters for the big three manufacturers as always you guys got in touch to share those memories of those big three games as we ask what's next so tom we stand atop the mighty tower the big three aligned above us which one are you which one of those mighty characters are you going to pull down first well, first off, let's take a look at Halo Infinite. Okay, Tom, um, dive deep. It's the great green hope of the great green box. Master Chief, a true breath of fresh air when he leapt onto the then unknown Xbox as its number one IP. Now, Tom, before we launch any further in, I want to talk about that wow moment, that time you first played the genre-defining Halo. That first time you fired up that great green breeze block... The music played. I'm not going to slaughter it for the listeners because it's probably got some poignant memories. And then you launched in. You're on the Pillar of Autumn. You're waking up. You're a Master Chief. Do you remember that moment? And how, talk back to me about that. Um, yeah. So my friend, I picked up a GameCube. My friend picked up the Xbox. So we had the, the bigger bit, boys console. Yeah. Um, and he was like, come round. I've discussed this before on the podcast. But uh, he was like, come round. Try it, Halo. You've got to play it. Yeah, and I was pretty impressed. It it was definitely up there with one of those games you look at and you're like, I really wish I owned this. Knowing you, was it like at all graphics, or were you like all graphic story everything? Everything on that, I think. The controls for the Warthog seem really strange, but now they seem like second nature. Yeah, um, it was just a different way of doing it. It was, it? yeah. And at the time, they probably should be commended because it's it was a brave step to take those strange it controls. Did feel, it did feel messy though. I'll give you that. It did yeah. feel a bit sort of like. Oh, but then when you played it a bit, you're like, why? Why don't all games sort of a uh, uh, first person game like that have vehicle controls like this? That is true. Uh, well, since that time where he launched on the Xbox, launching Microsoft's hopes, we've had many Halo games. Obviously, the sequels two and three. Halo Wars 1 and 2, ODST, and a few more. Tom, dropping in from his Pelican, a fan <laughs> of the show, Boba Loba, what's he got to say for himself? Uh, he said, uh, Halo 3, team doubles with Lee Cowden. I hope we got that right. Uh, said he had a great time. Not massively fussed about the campaign with Halo, but he'd love to see a return to form with the multiplayer. Hashtag Guardian. So he's... Really hoping the Halo Infinite multiplayer steps up its game and, and really gets back to those great times together spent together uh, basically destroying each other as the uh, the Spartans and the uh, and the enemies as well, the Covenant. Yes, for sure. It sounds like they had a great time. Sounds like Boba Loba, big fan of the green box. Tom, stand back, because whizzing around the corner on his 50cc <laughs> push and pop, fresh from a shift at the village CEX, Finster Gamer. Love to hear what he's got to say. Personally, I preferred being your own Spartan in Halo Reach rather than following Master Chief's story. But the idea of returning to split screen is pretty exciting. I think I spent more hours of my life playing Halo multiplayer than any other game I've played combined. Wow. Tom. Bold claim. Uh, when your friend cool. got the bigger boys Xbox down there, were you and him going through co-op? Um, yeah, we did a bit. So we were replaying some of the missions he'd already done. Um, and we also tried like the sort of competitive versus each other yeah. uh, multiplayer, which kind of felt like the natural progression from GoldenEye uh, yes. and, and that sort of step up. Um, the co-op for me was really 
that really made Halo special in my eyes. The fact that you could go through one in the seat, one in the gunner's seat. The yeah, those off. vehicles were definitely made for co-op. Well, obviously, other than the the single vehicles like the uh, the Ghost and such. Um, but uh, he, he makes a good point about Halo Reach there, having the playing as those four different Spartans really made it interesting and a no, bit of a spin-off. I, I never had from, the luxury of playing that game. Oh, it's good. How it's really good? good. Um, I don't know where I'd rank it in all the Halos, but it's it's up near the top. Um, okay. Well, the, the ending as well, spoilers, but it's an old game. You should have played it by now if you're a Halo fan. Uh, it, that sort of desperate... Uh, Last stand as the the uh, the guardian you're playing as is it, just fantastic, and it felt like almost um, strange how the, you, you you knew it was the end, but you're actually playing it rather than just seeing it in a cutscene. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. So it was you, like your like visor a... starts to crack, and you're just like, Rah, get some. And you just yeah going down swinging. So it was like a Zulu style sort of yeah onrush of covenant, yeah. I presume, or is it the floor? yeah? I often wonder how long you could have actually lasted. I don't know where there was a time limit where eventually it does cut to a cut scene. But spoilers for a ten year old game. But I thought that with Red Dead Redemption in the bar, I was like, no, I'm going, no, this can be done. Yeah, this can be. done. And with two with on the mountain, I thought they were going to take a very Halo Reach thing of like how many. Uh, agents can you take down with Arthur and oh uh, yeah well, that um, been good. I thought that was actually going to be the end of the game but I was proved wrong you were proven anyway wrong. moving back on to uh, Halo what we got here new fan of the show Doogie McBain got in touch over on Insta just like you can and he said I remember when Halo first came out and me and my friends used to pack our original Xboxes into our <laughs> school bags go to my friend's house where we would have four TVs set up in the middle of the living room and play link up death matches. It was so much fun, but no wonder we have back problems these days. Those original Xboxes certainly way to talk. Tom, we love stories like this, don't we? Yeah, that's I cool. Want more of these. And I love these stories. I can't get enough of them, Tom. This dude, Doogie, he loaded up an Xbox in his school bag, along with his French GCSE textbook. His he, he must book. have the shoulders of Master Chief himself. He must have the shoulders of Master Chief himself. He takes this great big green slab all the way around school with him, hacks it into his friend's house. For the sake of this story, 16,000 miles away. He sets it up in the middle of his room with his friend. They've got four TVs, so presumably there was two other guys. And they yeah. played competitive Halo. Tom, that was cutting edge for the time. It certainly was. And... Um, Carrying around a four-ton console, that is no mean feat. <laughs> and then not. he probably had to ask Mumsy to d- pop round in the car with the Duke and maybe ask <laughs> his dad to forklift it out the back of the car. <laughs> that controller. That beautiful controller. Uh, and with its LAN parties and then on to Xbox Live, Master Chief was our man. But what's his story? Keeping it light... Master Chief, a biochemically and cybernetically enhanced super soldier, much like Ross Kemp, a PCSO in our village. (laughs) Raised and trained from an early age to be a weapon of Earth, he's almost faceless. Never seen without his green-coloured armour and helmet, he's commonly referred to by his naval rank rather than his given birth name or serial designation. The character is voiced by Steve Downs, a Chicago disc jockey, in the video games in which he appears, Downs based his personification of the Chief, on an initial sketch, which he called, which called for a Clint Eastwood type character of few words. Tom, I, you know, the, the idea of this muscle-bound, chemically and cybernetically enhanced super soldier, much like the Ross Kemp <laughs> of EastEnders fame, who is the PCSO in our village. There's yes. no trouble here, that's for sure. Wayne Ray's juvenile delinquency lasted stripped two to the minutes. waist, mano a mano. There, there is. That's his code of conduct. I wonder where that was going, because you do know Wayne Ray's a minor, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm talking podcast. like fisticuffs. Oh, again, I wonder, listeners, this is obviously an audio podcast, and Tom raised his fist. I did wonder where that was going. <laughs> uh, Tom, tell me a bit more about Halo Infinite. Um, Halo Infinite is already being developed by 343 Industries. Um, obviously, they've done quite a few of the Halo games now, and really yeah. getting... Uh, their uh, hands around it. It's using the new Slipspace engine, and according to Microsoft, 
Master Chief returns on Halo Infinite with his greatest adventure yet to save humanity. Mm. Uh, the story has entered planning stages in 2015. The first trailer was released on June 10th, 2018. Uh, the developer said that all of the scenes in the Halo Infinite trailer were running in the in-game engine. Mm. That's pretty cool. It looked uh, definitely what, what looked impressive. Is, uh, what else have we found out that Halo Infinite's set to bring back? Uh, it's also going to feature split screen again, which Whoa. is uh, very popular among uh, a lot of listeners. Definitely. Uh, and that's in response to the backlash of its removal in the previous game. Mm. Uh, it will also have a beta prior to its release, described in a, as an insider flight program. Wow. Um, so, this year, we got another trailer. And as this is a podcast, we've typed up a little audible description yeah, of what's going on. it's a bit of a breakdown. On. So, we'll say, Kevin, run VT. <laughs> An unknown character as yet is seemingly stranded adrift in his Pelican dropship. After some considerable time, a beacon sounds and says that Friendly is in the vicinity. Excited and relieved, the character a male rushes to the window to see a Spartan in full molar armour. Cut to the back of the ship with the retrieval successful, the man's trying to hotwire the suit in a do-or-die manoeuvre. Luckily, it pays off and Master Chief is back online. Status report, says the Master Chief. There's something you need to see. We lost everything. Cut outside to a partially destroyed halo ring. Uh, much like a prawn ring from Iceland, that. <laughs> but probably not quite as tasty. We no. need to run, says the man. No, we need to fight. Uh, that was me. If That's a great it. impression. No problem. It was almost like the trailer was playing. That's what we've tried to bring to the listener. Uh, as the trailer plays out, we get a short tease of Cortana's voice, leaving us with many, many questions. And with it all being ready for your brand new Xbox, codenamed Scarlet, both due out for Christmas time 2020. Looks like a great time to be an Xbox fan, Tom. It certainly does. Well, That's it a, doesn't that, are oh they try, Yeah, but are they, no. Let's go, Panto. Tom, are you excited for new Xbox? Yes, I am. I, can we hear him, listeners? He's not excited enough, is he? Oh, They're right. not going to bring the new Xbox unless you show us how excited you are for the Xbox, Tom. <laughs> Are you excited for the new Xbox, Tom? Yes, I am. He's behind you. Fluffed his lines. Anyway, tell me more about the next game. Well, what can we say? Can These are just our thoughts, aren't they, on where they might go. Tell them. Oh, what are we talking about? Halo or the next game? I was just going to wrap up a little bit more with Halo. Hmm. Let me put the script now. I just feel like maybe Comfy. they'll throw a bit of a curveball and maybe have it third person. This is... Crazy talk, but you heard it here first. I think we might see third person Halo. Mm. I think Mumsy needs to check the sell by date <laughs> on the drawn <laughs> ring from Iceland because it sounds to me like Tom's hallucinating again. <laughs> Tom, before you plunge the Halo fan community into what's deemed to be a death explosion, please move on to Nintendo. Okay. So the first pillar's been established. We've that's, got Halo. That's Halo. He's one of the big three. You're next weaning up. out the next one. What we got? We've got Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, or whatever the title will be called. So good they named it twice. <laughs> that's it. Everyone's favourite green tunic wearing long-eared hero is back on the Switch after his first appearance in 1986. He's got some staying power, hasn't <clears> he? He certainly has. He makes Stingray look a little bit like a... A never run at the races, doesn't he? <laughs> 86 to now, he ain't stopped. Uh, but before we launch into that, uh, let's hear from a loyal listener, Geek Play Record. For me, Zelda is probably one of my favourite series alongside Final Fantasy. I started with the original Zelda, owning the gold cartridge, Ooh. and then Zelda 2, the silver cartridge, both on the NES, of course. Then the snares blew my mind with a link to the past. I really enjoyed all Zeldas up until Breath of the Wild. Wow. Did they exceed all my expectations with this? Oh, I wonder where that was going to go, Tom. I thought he was going to tell me that he hated it. Right. You were hoping. Yeah. You're not a fan, are you? No. Zelda Minecraft. <laughs> get tree, rub tree, wood, fire. He's about man. to get clubbed with a, a very shoddy Skegness replica of the Master Sword, but let's move on. What you've picked up is a Minecraft sword. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. It's an unbelievable game in my view. So much more, so much to explore and do. 
He says his hopes for the future Breath of the Wild sequel is to create more traditional style Zelda dungeons. Uh, the shrines are simple and quick for me. Uh, so he said, really hoping for a map full of dungeons and secret weapons, it would make it the best Zelda ever. He's excited. He certainly is. He's more um, excited than you. That point about the traditional style dungeons, I'd like to see that come back. That's what uh, I wasn't a fan of. You didn't like the shrines? Mm, I just didn't like the whole, you want to have a campfire because you want to get warm, but you can't because it's raining. And it's like video. Why? When you did logic? Love all that. When you, did logic matter in a video game? You loved all that in Red Dead. That's different. That's Red Dead. It's to be expected. I want to climb on a pony. I take that back. No, I do. Yeah, I want to climb on a pony. I want to go around, talk to a tree, go in. It's a dungeon. Nothing too clever. Nothing too fancy. It's a Zelda game. I get a dungeon. I get introduced to a new weapon. You did say to me in the past, though, you were a bit sick of the formula of, like, go to dungeon, get weapons. Never ask a gamer what he wants, Tom. No. Because he'll say he wants it to be like the old game, then you bring it out, and I'll say, I wish I'd done something a bit new. It's The Last Jedi all over again. I I don't like Last Jedi. Exactly. You're part of the problem. (laughs) Oh, Tom! For weeks you wanted to repost and thrust with your part of the problem, and now I find myself stuck with a Minecraft sword. And <laughs> fine, I'm part of the problem. This is next level. Tom, So one more then. Who we got? Uh, we've got, well, it's good old Odders. He never fails to uh, chime in. He's renting the spare bedroom off Mumsy now. Is he? Yep. So he's we need that extra rent money though, don't we? Well, he's either, depends how you look at it, he's either a new brother... Or depending on whether he spends time playing console with us or watching Emmerdale with Mumsy, could be a new father. Really? Well, you know how things go with lodgers. Yep. Luckily McClum console. came and went. McClum came and went. He stayed around like a dark cloud on a bad afternoon and then boosh, she was gone. And in came Lord Ponselbury, full of gifts, presents and toys. And we're ready to throw old Lord Ponselbury to the dogs so we can get Odders in. Absolutely. Mumsy would like Odders. The cougar that she is? Certainly, yeah. Um, so, what's he got to say? I never played a Zelda until Ocarina of uh, Time in the N64, but the previews had him sold. Uh, there were the short TV ads that had the epic music from Conan on the Barbarian accompanying them. Uh, when he got the game of Christmas 1998... That's a magical said, time, Tom, for you, isn't it? Tears. Tears. <laughs> Sniffs and so, tears. So, that's all I can say. Um... He said it was the first game I properly sank hours into exploring all the different areas of Hyrule. And it was also the first game he played that really told a story and drew me in. Since then, though, he said he's only really played Wind Waker on GameCube. He bought Twilight Princess but could never get into it as much as Ocarina. Hmm. So, apart from lining all us up with our mum, Mumsy, uh, some interesting points there. He likes the old Zeldas, doesn't he? It seems like he couldn't eat... He couldn't get into as much as Ocarina, so Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, they didn't they didn't please him, did they? No. You like um, Wind Waker, I like Wind Waker. Twilight Princess. It was kinda like the no, the like bigger Olives. boys game after Wind Waker, wasn't it? For all the people clambering for the well, more as, realistic as, as looking. As bigger boy as Zelda gets, let's face yeah, it. Yeah, it is uh probably not as dark in tone to Majora's Mask, but Still, certainly, the probably the most real they've gone. What was the one? What was the one before um, Wind Waker? The one that ended up with the touch controls was that Twilight Princess? Came out after Wind Waker. My apologies. Yeah, it did. Uh, and, and then, then we had the Sky Skyward the... Sword. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Twilight yeah. Princess. Skyward Sword's very light, but it's it's got a quite a good story. When I played Twilight Princess, it just felt like they'd sort of. It felt very. You much said to like, me you thought probably HD Ocarina. Yeah, when you got out into the world map, it felt very, very similar. It felt like they were playing it very, very safe after Wind Waker with that. Yeah, I think that's a fair, a fair comment. Um, so the new version of Link's Adventure uh, started development roughly after a month after the release of the final DLC pack for the original Breath of the Wild. Uh, which was entitled Champions Ballad, and that released December 7th, 2017. Uh, the team for the new game is once again headed up by uh, Eiji Onuma, uh, who is overseeing the project, while another smaller team works on finishing up the Switch remake of the Game Boy uh, Link's Awakening remake. 
which mm, um, I'm quite looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of uh, old school Zelda fans excited. It looks great. I never completed that one as well, down to probably getting frustrated with the Game Boy uh, non backlit screen and not enough batteries. I, I think back in the day, you know, <clears> when I think back to the Game Boy, it's one of those ones where if you went on holiday and you had a game and it was like a good game to play, you you might see it through. More often than not, it was just a bit of a distraction. Mm. And I think games, I think that's why it's great that they're bringing that through. Because I know a lot of people probably enjoyed that on the Game Boy, but I'd say a lot of people haven't even seen it. Yeah. It's also going to feature the um, the extra dungeon put in in the uh, colour version. So that'd that's be cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. To see it remade. And to reuse all those play mechanics again for really what's going to be a fresh audience. This isn't Link yeah. to the Past. It's not there's, seen There's a much. little bit of a, a dungeon builder in there as well. But again, we've, we chat a, a, a little bit about it in the E3 debrief. Uh, if you want to catch up on that, go, so uh, go it check it out. I think mentioned last episode as well. It's probably my new God of War Red Dead sort of Stop game. Stop it now. Going to get another one in there. Tell me, before you leap into the Overwatch podcast, get me through this. Um, so Anuma recently stated that younger members of the team have been playing many other open world games, which would you believe wah, wah, wah. included Red Dead Redemption 2? So we may see some... Bingo, Tom, bingo. Yeah. Unofficial controller, bingo. Down your drinks if you're an adult. I think... Down your uh, panda pops if you're a minor. Looks to me like Devin Zilla's got bingo. He has. He's won a bottle of scotch off the tombola. <laughs> That's for his dad. You better give that to Daddy Kins. Yeah. Actually, got tagged in a picture the other day of Devin Zilla and Baby Zilla. It was hot, and then Mumsy Zilla was, took a picture and said that they were going out for a swim. And Devin Zilla did not look happy. Did not. He did not look happy. He looked like he was about to just lasers coming out of his eyes, set fire to stuff. I don't think he likes to get wet. Full Godzilla. Oh, yeah, you know. You know he he's the spawn of Godzilla. I can't remember that creature's name. Is it Dilute? Oh, what's its name? Listeners screaming. Literally, they've looked down. They were quite mind in their own business. Listen to these guys ramble on, and then I can't remember the name of Godzilla's child. And they've looked round at their stereo and they're going, "It's are you idiots?" Let us know. Unofficial yeah. controller podcast DM. We need to know Twitter or Instagram. Or emails at questions. At we pride ourselves on facts, so we need to get these things correct, don't we? Tom, the listeners couldn't hear the email. What's the email? Uh, questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. He's slipped that in there, trying to catch me up. But, Just uh, making sure he's awake, because as you know, listeners, he sleep mumbles through this, and Mumsy has to read him a transcript for his bedtime story. This time, It sinks in, then. Because so. we're talking about his games, he's with us. Oh, yes. Um, so, where, where the, we were up to... Where the hell did we get to there, Tom? Why don't you hit me up with the start uh, of that whole paragraph? No, we were uh, discussing this. We may see some smaller influences uh, from Red oh. Dead Redemption 2. Wow, wow, wow. Bingo! Finster Gamer. He's, he's just called Bingo. That means he's won a tin of garden peas. Excellent. Nice work, Finster Gamer. Uh, yeah. Uh, Anuma... Do you want to start that again? No. You know, uh, funny. Uh, <laughs> Anuma also went on to say that uh, there were almost too many ideas to fit into any more DLC for the original Breath of the Wild, and so thus came the idea of a full sequel. Uh, to the shock and pleasant surprise of many Nintendo fans, the company released a short teaser trailer at this year's E3, revealing that it will in fact be a true sequel to Breath of the Wild. That came out of nowhere, really, as we talked about what in the E3. Redemption 2. <laughs> Bingo! Radbash Gaming, Tom. He's won a box of After Eight. Now, I know you want to mention all the listeners' <laughs> names, but there just isn't enough time. Isn't and enough the Tom Bowler doesn't there have is, enough prizes. There isn't enough names. 5,000 prizes we haven't got. Okay. Anyway. We've just got the Ferrero Rocher left, so between now and the end of the episode, I hope more Someone's going to get them. Yes, exactly. So let's break this trailer down a little. Once again, Kevin... Run the VT. We see Link and Zelda in what appears to be a cavern of sorts. The trailer gives the idea that this is somewhere deep underground, but this may be an elaborate trick. This is often the case in teaser trailers. Zelda is seen, carried by a large animal, 
loaded to the hilt with equipment. Does this signify the idea of Zelda and Link going on this new journey together? Has many fans excited with the chance of a co-op adventure, or even Zelda finally playable? Well, who are you going to rescue if she's by your side? Maybe you play Zelda and rescue Link. Whoa. That would turn it on its head. I don't want to see that personally at all. I think but... that's needed. I actually think it's time oh, no. for some female representation in, in, in Zelda. It's named after her, by the way. It's, it's you know, it's the most disgusting thing ever. It's not called Link, is it? I'd be quite Zelda? happy with a, a co-op option if you want to, but I just don't want to... It's the game I go to to play a great action-adventure game. So what does it what does it matter if it's Zelda or Link that you're playing? Because I want to play as Link. Who even is Link? He's different he is every us. time. He is whoever you are. I think you got a little bit lost on that. We <laughs> <coughs> we then see some strange energy pouring out the corpse, and a long green hand pushing down onto it. Now this is where many fans have noticed the corpse is decorated in Gerodo jewellery, and has the same long red hair of a Gerodo warrior. Now long-term fans will know this was the origin of the long-time antagonist Ganondorf. So will we see him make a return? Listeners, I'm excited for this. Is Tom excited? Absolutely. Very excited. Mm, Very excited. We should have recorded this live down at the Village Hall, this telecast of the Village Hall, while trying to do a Tom Byler and not working out. (laughs) You aren't excited enough. What could be the biggest game of your life? I think it could be. See, obviously playing Ocarina, Ganondorf's my original um, antagonist. So having Ganon, the the more like the beast uh, villain in Breath of the Wild, was a little bit disappointing. Oh, Tom, I, I cut the teaser trailer short. We cut to Hyrule, we know and love from Breath of the Wild. And then the Hyrule Castle seems to rise out of the ground. Is this because of the strange goings-on in the cavern seen earlier? Is this another point in the game entirely? What's for certain is that this game has every Nintendo fan talking. That was the, that was the trailer, Tom. I paused it. We had a little bit of interaction. I played it again. Again. We're hopefully doing these trailers a complete disservice. <laughs> So, um, how can they improve on what many consider the perfect Zelda title? Um, Me personally, I'd like to see a return of proper dungeons, as we discussed earlier. Mm. Uh, More upgradable armour. I mean, it'd be great if they brought back all the... Back to those proper dungeons. Would you like to see them coexist in a world with the original, with the Breath of the Wild... Shrines. Shrines. Yeah, definitely. Or would you like to see shrines all gone? And then dungeons brought back as they were from back in the day. You know, you find the shot, hook shot, and that's that level. And then, do you want that? Or are you just done with that? I really enjoyed the shrines, but it's the things that replace, like the divine beasts, which are the four um, mechanical creatures uh, that kind of replace the traditional dungeons. I didn't really overly enjoy them because they just felt like a bigger shrine and didn't have that sort of vast scale of feeling like you could get lost in the dungeon and you had to get the right keys to unlock the right doors. The water temple. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So keep the shrines, but put in some proper dungeons. Proper, like, caverns that you can... And have it it where you find... You mean Oblivion Zelda? Not so much. I'm not a massive fan of those games. Um, Have it where you find them naturally... Don't look at me with that shock face. Like the first, like Oblivion, you got all over that like a rash on, I don't know. Sort but of then I realised it wasn't really my cup of tea. I tried Skyrim, it's good, but it's not you amazing. You finished Oblivion? Yeah. Then when, what, at what point in time during that this is back in the, this is this is you realise it wasn't for this you? This is back in the day of the achievements, my friend. <laughs> Needed that thousand G. Wow, okay. Anyway, going back... We knew he was cheap listeners, but he will literally <coughs> sell himself down the road for a thousand gamer score. Certainly will. Um, yeah, going back, I just want to f- be more transitional into finding the dungeon. So just you're exploring a cave and then there's an entrance there. Not just 
I don't think they'll ever go back to that. You need to go here to this dungeon to get this weapon to progress. Just, just describe, just describe to me that that moment again of what you want from a Zelda game. To transition naturally, so exploring a cave mm. randomly, you haven't mm. been sent there, mm -hmm. and you find an entrance, and you go in, and that's the dungeon. Do you know? I've just thought. There's a game that was released and it lets you naturally walk around this map. It's medi you know, it's like a medieval magic sort of thing like you like. And you can naturally stumble across caves if you dig around in them and stuff. You, you find these doors and you go in a little bit more of a... There's a dungeon in there, Tom. And you, you can find weapons and secret bits. And it's great. It's all natural, unscripted stuff. You go for a bimble in one direction, it happens. Now that game... Is Oblivion. It's quite old. You said you don't like it. Then you just told me that if Todd Howard brought that out with like... In fact, he did bring Skyrim out for the Switch with an Amiibo support. So you could <laughs> wear Link's tunic and have his shield and his sword. I tried it. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> and it, that's still not your dream game? No, it's strange. I just... It didn't really click just with me. Just describe that scene to me again. What scene? Where you just naturally playing in the world and you stumble across this... <laughs> Dark cave. Anyway. <laughs> the man's a fan of the Oblivion franchise. Come on, Tom, before I, don't, I so, kill your love for this franchise anymore, round out that Zelda stuff. I'd also like to see more of the upgradable armour, um, bringing back all the outfits from Breath of the Wild 1. Um, it, it would be great if... Because you could upgrade them and like the mountaineering gear made you climb faster and... The Zora gear made you swim faster. I think that's a real cool thing they could probably do more with. Um, I'm not quite sure what, but there's a lot of potential there. Um, and this one really got to me a little bit. The Breath of the Wild world, as good as it was, the, the Hyrule Castle and the surrounding castle town was just a ruin, which makes sense in the story. Mm. But I really want to see that kind of even partially rebuilt and like a bit of a market town and just make it, fill it full of characters, make it be the hub of the world uh, that you're in. Because it does feel very empty. Don't even, don't do it. Don't okay. do it. I won't, I won't. For the listeners, I was looking at Tom in the middle distance and I was just sort of scratching my head, a little confused, a little confused. Um, any more to say on Zelda, Tom? No, uh, if you're a fan of Nintendo and Zelda, this should be the one title that you're really keeping near to the ground for because uh, we saw the turnaround for Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so will we see that again? They have the world and they have the game engine in place, so things can happen very quickly. This is exciting. Now, we've talked about this new Breath of the Wild sequel, Breath of the Wild 2, and we're wondering if he needs to be around if he needs to pony up and be around next Christmas to launch a very staunch sort of rear guard action defending the switches. Yeah, the against the, the, the big two the new consoles. consoles. So that's in. what we refer to as next gen, bigger boys. I think, obviously with the development time they've had already, I think they could pull it off. Um, but and will it be uh, good enough to yeah, head off? Of, for, of, for me, personally, of course, but I'm thinking, it's got some stiff competition I'm graphically. That, yeah, I'm thinking about the people that weren't lobotomised. <laughs> are they are they going to snub let's say they've got both a PlayStation or an Xbox next gen and they're playing their new whatever it is PS5 Xbox Assassin's Starlet Creed game. 7 Assassin's Creed Cod of War don't make out like Cod of War Cod of War <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty the story 20. of the fishing wars let's say they've got that and then they happen to look up and on TV is an advert for the new Breath of the Wild. Are they going to dust off the Switch and go get themselves a copy? Or are they going to like, sure, I'm all done? No, I think if you are a fan and you've bought a Switch for the big first I'm just playing titles, devil's advocate here. You know, maybe they want a sequel to Zelda Minecraft. You know, they do. Tom, before I upset everybody this week, launching scathingly into talk about Overwatch and uh, all that other good You're stuff. You're definitely going to upset people with your opinion of this next game. And what game is this, Tom? It's the sequel to the latest God of War. So we're going to call it God of War 2. Bingo. 
Um, do you want to lead off with this? Go on then. Surprisingly, at least to us, Kratos is the youngest character here as far from a creation point of view, launching in 2005. Joe, that doesn't even seem... We, my... thought, we thought he came out before Master Chief, didn't we? Yeah, my brain can't compute a time where Kratos was coming out in 2005. They even squeezed the sequel out before the PS2 shuffled off its mortal coil, Tom. This makes no sense to me at all. In 2005, what happened at the end of 2005? Uh, the first God of War launched... No, the... no. Slow down. Chew your food. What happened at the end of 2005, Tom? There were two strange-looking men in a queue at midnight to get a console called the Xbox 360. Do you remember that? Really? I think so. This is what I'm saying to you. Have you been in the room? Because yes. I think the Xbox 360 launched in 2005. Kratos was born in 2005 onto the PS2. That got cracking reviews. Great game. In the shadow of what was coming out, <laughs> that looks great, does it? No. Um, it was criticised a bit, though, for uh, its lack of depth, and many saw it as a simple hack and slash. I think that's... Um, Good showcase for the ageing console, though, Tom. It was, yeah. Um, I mean, it was a bit of a progression from Devil May Cry, because it was a similar style of gameplay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I've played them both quite recently. Devil yeah, May which, Cry. Probably hold, which holds up better, do you think? <sighs> probably got a war. Yeah. Devil May Cry had the... I know God of War's camera is... You know, it puts you in some strange places at times, but it all seems to fit. Whereas Devil May Cry's camera was a bit of a crossover between original Resident... It was a hangover of the original Resident Evil camera. Yeah. And um, what was that other game that they brought out? Um, is it... They've done a re-release on PS4 recently. It was like one of your first uh, PS2 games. Is it on Minutia? Oh, yes, yeah. And the cameras sort of get stuck and flick between. When I played the original Devil May Cry, there was lots of this walk into the camera and then the camera flicks mm, around and yeah. you're still moving in one direction yeah, yeah. and you think, oh, now I've gone the wrong way and you walk back out the camera and it loads up the other room. You know, God of War, it's, it's almost seamless as you go through. There's no jumps or anything and you can you morph quite quickly into the, the cinematics of the game. Obviously nothing like the modern God of War. Yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't say such heresy, but um, yeah, solid game. Even now, it still feels you know well. Some of the fonts, even at the time, I felt dated the game. Right, it looked a bit Spectrum, didn't it? The fonts, that blood red sort of Greek style. I know why they went for it, but it just looked a bit cheap. Yeah, I mean, I uh, my first experience of that game was playing it, uh, a demo of God of War um, on the PlayStation Two. And I believe that was fighting the uh, three-headed Hydra. Oh yeah, it's uh, quite early on, on, it, on like a ship boat. battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like a tutorial section. But obviously, other games at the time were catching my attention. So, well, Tom, we talk about its lack of depth, but what do we know? Still, with a Metacritic of ninety-four percent, Kratos was here to stay, and we love him. The franchise still pushing the Greek mythology of Kratos all the way to the prequel God of War Ascension. Quite like that. You played it. No. That was on the Vita, wasn't it? No. Was it not? Ascension? Hmm. Ah. Which was the one on the handheld then? Do you remember? Uh, Chains of Olympus and... Chains of Olympus. No, it wasn't Ascension. Ascension's on 3. It's it's on PlayStation 3. It's a prequel. And I think he came after God of War 3. Okay. Uh, Yeah, Chains of Olympus. Hmm. Now you've got me. Once again, Chris McClum driving down the road, mind his own business, turned to his speaker and he's screaming at me in disgust. Like, George, what the hell? You're an average games news show host. You should know this stuff. I don't, Chris. <laughs> so please email me with the name. What else are you going to tell me about this God of War 2 malarkey, Tom? Well, it's here, after those games, that things took a different turn. And uh, God of War turned its hand to Norse mythology, mm. using uh, great uh, story ways to substantiate the move from Greece. Yeah, that was an unexpected yet welcome surprise, that Norse yeah. mythology. 
twist. And I did like the way it was explained away in game. You know, they can transit through these different realms. And spoilers, which we Yeah, we're going to just have a little spoiler warning um, because we are going to be discussing the current God of War uh, with uh, our thoughts when on should we tell them to tune go. in in fact to tell you what no, it's just... look in the comments if you're nervous about God of War spoilers two year old game you're not too sure look in the comments flip straight through to listen to Stingray safe as houses let's face it yeah that's what most of them are doing anyway <laughs> well um, yeah so that moved from Greece to the Norse mythology I think it was a wise choice. It was probably getting a bit stale uh, with the Greek one. Agreed. I think they'd done everything they could do. How much more could they do to Kratos before he just gave up on life? <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll kill your son, your wife, doesn't matter to us. Torture you for eternity. That's yeah. fine. You're the god of war, just deal with it. And um, obviously they're bringing in Atreus, um, Kratos' son in the, the Norse setting, mm-hmm. uh, giving a bit more backstory and um, having a bit more of a connection. Uh, to him but uh, well things weren't really looking good either um, when this was in sort of well c- quite close to being released talks of unplayable Tom uh, yeah um, and uh, it was looking to be a disaster um, but one final push from Corey Balrog, Balrog and his team they pulled it off uh, and boy were we in for a treat I mean you I'm not a fan of this game. I wouldn't much, say I'm not a fan. I just don't think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I think it's an okay game. I don't think it's the best game. Yeah. And so you play... I don't think that's a controversial line. I think it's okay, but I'm not going to go down on a sword and say, oh, 10 out of 10, best game I've ever played. You know, just it's not going to happen. That game came out the same year as Red Dead Redemption. Two. Two. Yeah. Well, we were quite shocked, weren't Rad we? Rad Bash Gamers won the Frere Rocher. I see. Yeah. yeah. So, bingo. <laughs> done. Um, done and finished. Yeah. Part yeah. Uh, we were quite sh- we were quite shocked, weren't we, when it, it claimed the Game of the Year award. Um, Big time. Like the official, what we class as the official Because I one. just, I don't know why, but I just didn't, f- like, I just... People were talking about this big connection, and I, I played this after Red Dead Redemption. It's maybe Red Dead Redemption yeah, that... 2, which has maybe jaded me, but it's a totally different game. And mm. I like, oh, look at me, I like to think I've got the intelligence, but I haven't got the intelligence to even turn a tap on, so I don't know why I'm claiming to have any. <laughs> but I just, yeah, it played differently, it felt clunky. Maybe I'm not very good at controls, but I blitzed through Red Dead 2, yeah. know, no problems. God of War, it's a bit crunchy. The it's not an easy game. Combat got a bit boring. I know when it first came out, they were telling people, if you want to enjoy the story more, you should probably play it on the lower difficulty setting. Mm. I mean, it's it's not... I played it through on the one they... On the normal. The normal. Yeah. Um, challenging game. It wasn't ridiculous. Yeah. Um, there were times where I felt it was... There were times where it was too nice to you. I don't know if this was difficulty I played it on, but I've, I've mentioned to you, I've worn a boss down. Completely, and I died. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. But instead of being punished, I'm given all my life back, and the boss stays on like two pixels. <laughs> and then it's like bish bash, and he's dead. It feels a bit, I don't know, I felt I didn't want to play through it again, but I didn't want it to be that easy again. Yeah. You know, I felt like I'd nearly got it, and if I'd had another go, I could have done it. But mm. instead, it put me down, put a dummy in my mouth, put a fresh diaper on me, bish bosh bosh, and it's done. Yeah, I just felt like that wasn't very great. The characters, everyone talking to me about how great, you know, the bond between Kratos and Atreus is. You don't see it. I preferred the head. <laughs> Mamiya. Yeah. He's, he's a good addition. He's um, the best character in that game. And bizarrely, on my new game plus, it's quite a while before you meet him. Yeah. Um, but forgot. it can't come soon enough, can it? I don't think. He does. Uh, he does add something. Definitely he adds to that the... first third voice to yeah. the narration that just breaks it up a little bit. You know how many how many boys can we hear? It's, he didn't say Kratos is not known. I see. Um, what's that guy's name? The head. Amir. He's the poor Heyman. <laughs> to Kratos is Brock Lesnar. Okay. See what I'm doing? Yeah. 
He That's... sells Kratos. Yes. He does the intro, he does the talking for him, because Kratos is just the meat palace that just smashes things up. So, Tom, much like the immortal Paul Heyman, talk to me about what happened off the back of God of War's release. Well, subject to glowing critical praise, this game was a hit, uh, with consumers and critics alike winning many awards, such as numerous games of the year, uh, and uh, from nearly every publication. Pretty much everyone. The washing machine landslide, really. Weekly newsletter claimed it to be their game of the year. <laughs> I heard it's available on mm-hmm. all formats. Yeah, and the East Midlands Butcher's Parable listed it as the second best game of the year. Oh. Can't win them all. Mm. Well, Tom, one would imagine that it's always going to fall behind Butcher Simulator 2015. Yeah, in their eyes. <laughs> um, and when it was shown at E3, it obviously won a lot of awards there as well. Yes. Um, rounding that up uh, of many great accolades. As for the new game, though, Tom, I think this is the last we know of the, the big three titles. And we're excited to share our hopes and thoughts as to where the sequel will go. So this is where we're going to get into what deep Tom calls... spoiler territory. Deep spoiler territory. So again, if you're nervous... Go to the comments section, it'll be separated off. Skip forward to listener Stingray. See you soon. 98% of you. <laughs> to the remaining 2%, me and Tom are going to dance the devil dance all over the God of War story. So we know from this game, Tom, that we can traverse to other mythologies. Are they going to jump straight to another one, or are they going to stomp the Norse mud hole dry? Yeah, so revealed in the game, it's shown that there can be travel between different realms. And we see Kratos and Atreus in a sort of treasure-filled room um, filled with treasures from different cultures or mythologies. So um, we see some Japanese, some Egyptian. I mean, that would be a a very cool setting. We've seen a little bit of that in Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, Obviously, there's a scene with uh, Kratos finding like a a, a Greek vase with uh, a picture of uh, Tom. That's yeah. called a Greek urn. Is it mm. cool? Okay. One question for you. Yeah. How much does a Greek urn? I don't know. <laughs> that was a stupid kid joke, dad joke. Where's the punchline? That's it, moron. How much does it. a Greek urn? urn? That's a Greek urn. How much does a Greek, you know, George Potopodopodis? Yeah. Who runs the chemist? He's Greek. I'm asking how much he earns. It's I've got you. A play on words. I've got you. It probably wasn't that funny. Tomoid. But George Topolopodopodis, he runs a damn good pharmacy. And if you've got chicken pox, he does that great chamomile lotion. Check him out. I'm sure many of them will. Write that name down, because if we have to come back to him, I'm never going to remember Dopodopoulos, to be honest. I'm sure it's changed already. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Luckily, they're not much of a stickler for uh, precision storyline, are they? There's lots and lots of uh, plot holes here. Yeah. Um, Trace Ray being one of them. mm -hmm. She's a big plot hole. No no offence, Stingers. But, uh, yeah, with, with God of War, they certainly uh, have got the storylines nice and tight compared to us. Um, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I just, I, it was the shame and the embarrassment of, like, on air saying that, I don't want to say it again, Trace Ray's a larger lady. You know, Stingers is a, you know. Anyway. Anyway. Tell me more about this God of War 2, Tom. Uh, yeah, so Atreus is revealed to be the uh, the Norse, or this version of Loki, mm. who we know to probably is the trickster uh, yeah, god Yeah, now that of, felt of, a bit of an ill fit, because of everything we experienced at yeah, that point, it did feel like a bit he, of a tough sell, didn't he it? He does say a line of, can I change into it, when he finds out he is also part god. Um, yes. He asks Kratos, his father, can I change into an animal 
uh, this is known in Norse mythology to be one of Loki's powers, mm-hmm. uh, and also his master of languages, which is obviously uh, common in Atreus well, as he progresses through the game. In game, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's a because uh, he can sort of do uh, like. Deci- say judo, judo. Judo. What's uh, judo? He can, he can sort of decipher languages that Kratos can't, um, and. I think they'll probably push it. I mean, we might see a, an older Atreus, probably teenager, maybe. It didn't feel like it was ending that way, though, did it? Do you think they'll follow on very quickly? Well, spoilers, but Thor, yeah. Thor drops in your back garden, doesn't he? He certainly does. Yeah. So if you um, after you finish the game, what's that buzzing sound? That looks like Thor's here, boy. Yeah. Uh, you came back for a quick sleep. There's me thinking I could for all the teasing the game does. Statues of Thor around the world. You don't fight him in this one, do you? Um, Not at all. I thought I thought we were building t- towards because we fight a couple of people, don't we? We like, fight Thor's sons, yes. uh, Magni and Modi, um, which I thought was a great boss battle. Before God of War, Tom knew nothing about Norse mythology. Uh, it's good. It gets you interested now, in stuff. Look how much he knows. I love Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It's one of those moments where I'm like, I'm so proud of him. He done good. Table. Boy done good. Boy done good. He's read a couple of Norse mythology books. Uh, yeah. So you fight them. Uh, you you manage and to kill one of them. And, actually, and, out of all the game, all the battles in the game, yeah. I thought that was probably the best one. Mm. That bit where you're back to back with Atreus uh, and it's like very misty and they're running at you. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. Um, but they saved the big man for the sort of little after credits scene. And like I say, I went back, all Red Redemption style, oh, get my head down. And boom, it happened. Yeah. I no, I had no and he's idea. He's there and the, the cape kind of flows back like a Wild West duster coat to reveal Molyneux the, the hammer. Look at you, you are impressed with this <laughs> knowledge of Norse mythology. I like the way that we can go through pages and pages of script and you can't even pronounce words like turn or substantiate, yet Molyneux, not an issue for you. No, it's weird, isn't it? Very strange. <laughs> you can tell the games he cares about. Oh, yeah. Um... So I think sequel, we're going to see that battle with Thor. Well, don't forget, for the listeners that haven't seen it plastered all over the internet, um, Corey Balrog did a release of tweets that actually the first letter spelt out the word Ragnarok. Ah. I tried to communicate this to you, but it seemed like it was falling on deaf ears. Okay. Confirmation. Mm. So with uh, the, the death of Boulder, um, one of Thor's brothers, who is the main antagonist of this current God of War game, uh, the snow starts to fall, thus signifying the beginning of Ragnarok. Mm. Um, so that's obviously going to be a big part of the sequel. Um, we'd probably fight the old father himself, Odin. Oh, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe he's the third instalment. Maybe we're going to get Shemu 3 and we'll just be like playing these for ages. Wow. Well, hopefully not. Do you think we spun on enough about God of War 2 there, Tom? Uh, yeah, but, um... Wait. We've got something else coming up. A little bit more feedback. Yeah, we've got, uh, before we sign off, Mark Garage Gamers, he's been in touch. Um, ah, now this is Mark.Garage.Gamers of Instagram and YouTube fame. Yeah. And we implore... We implore you, listeners. In fact, if you don't, I'll get my mumsy to have a word with your mumsy. Take away your sweet privileges. Go check out mark.garage.gamers over on Insta and, more importantly, on YouTube. While you're there, a bit of self-promotion, why not take a swing over to our channel and give us a like and a subscribe. Absolutely. And all that good stuff. Yeah. So, he says... Hi guys, just in response to the Big 3 episode coming up, he says it's shameful to admit, but I've never played a Zelda game Mm -hmm. in great detail. Just messed around on the Game Boy, really. Something I really need to remedy, uh, but don't know where to start. Well, hopefully we can uh, recommend you some picks in the future. Uh, He said, I only started the Halo series when I bought my Xbox One S in February, and so far, I've completed numbers one and two. Love them both and excited where the series goes. Well, you're in for a treat with three, definitely. Uh, but I needed a break, so he moved on to Gears of War for now. 
As for God of War, I've always been Sony since PS1, so I've played all of them in this series except except the latest one on PS4, which I had last Christmas, but not played due to the Xbox purchase. Well, we hope you didn't tune in for these spoilers for that God of War, because <laughs> uh, there'll be no point in you playing it. Oh, how unfortunate that he skipped a list of Stingray and he needs to skip back. Maybe when we get to listen to Stingray, we'll say everyone that's arrived here after the spoilers... Apart from Mark Garage Gamers, you need to rewind five minutes. Not into the spoilers. You need to be careful. To hear your shout out. He needs to... Yeah, he's got to play a danger game, hasn't he? I like yeah. that, Tom. Um, he said he's only heard great things about the game, obviously. Um, he says to us, keep up the good work. Regards to Stingray. And he asks if he has the copy of Goonies 2 in 4K yet, please. <laughs> And he rounds that out with from your bunker to our garage. Now that's great. There's a man who likes the show, Tom. Yeah. How's that feel? Really good. Yeah. Like we've done something worthwhile. Yeah. Mumsy. Makes it all worthwhile. Tell you what, why don't we ask her to take down your Crash Tag Team Racing review? Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with it. Calm down. And put up mark.garage.gamers on the fridge. What do you reckon? Maybe so. I think that's one we can. It's had its week of. of glory, hasn't it? Yeah, it's had its week of glory. And Tom, the link, the glory of the three, the big three, we've gazed in, and we've looked at it, and we've thought, wow, these staggering powerhouses. There's no way that their next games can't succeed. Talking of succeeding, Tom, here's a man who likes to succeed. Listener Stingray. He's been around. He has. The whole world. Where did he start, Tom? Well, first up, we've got Blue Canyon Games. He's got a great little uh, Gears of War selection there with the Gears of War 1, 2 and 3 trilogy. Um, And a Gears of War Judgment... Is that an artwork book? Um, Once again, the old man's miles behind you, Tom, so just give him two seconds to get caught up. Get his That's Nokia. all right. We'll, we'll, Need uh, to just shovel a little bit more coal on the Nokia. We'll move on. He's also and it's loaded the gears of war. Here we are. Oh, Tom, before we start, Stingray doesn't just do listeners. Stingray, Stingray is a fictional character with an ego larger than your reality ego. Listeners, Stingray, when the big man makes a house call, you better be ready. These guys got in touch to show us their pick up some Stingray's boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's boot on Instagram or Twitter. Forget Twitter, no one's bothering with that anymore. <laughs> Stick it on Instagram. It's dead. Or email us <laughs> at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Now you can tell me about Blue Canyon Games, because the listeners know exactly what's going on. Hopefully they're joining us on this journey as they listen, in their car, at the controls of their lawnmower, spinning around on a drill that's actually gripped hold in the wall, Wallace and Gromit style, they're spinning around. The Kenwood Magic Mix has got caught on Mumsy's apron, because she's got so distracted about listening to Stingray, and she's being pulled slowly to her death in the middle of a Victoria sponge batter. Is it cake mix? Let's not let that get in the way. Okay. A really boring story, Tom. And Blue Canyon Games' Gears of War collection. My, my. There's a man. He likes it that much. He's bought all of them. He has. Uh, next up, we've got Ozcat.tv. Uh, uh, Actually, long looking time at listener. that, that's sat on a COG logo. It's in some sort of crazy box. Hmm. Sorry, Tom. What's next? Ozcat.tv. Um, oh. That switch shelf is brimming. Uh, 117 unique titles with a few more on the way next week. How does he get the room? I don't know. I What's really going to happen when he fills all his shelves? What's going to have to make space? I don't know. He's got some tough choices to make. He has. Is it? And I like the way he's got all those big boxes. Or oh, the easy choice. More shelves. Just, that's something that never even crossed my mind. Um, next up, we've got Sharaban, um, who's got the Strider collection. Good old Sharaban. PlayStation and Mega Drive. Hmm, interesting, that. Mm. Ah, another loyal fan on the show, Sadol Dono. He's got himself a little Tomb Raider. I've got this one with a little art book. Uh, he's got himself a Funko Pop. Didn't see them at first because those controllers, camouflage, Tom. It's worked. Digital camo. <laughs> 
Retro Collector Ray, new name to the show. Welcome to the family. Looks like they've gone and picked up some car boot pickups, Tom. Some of the worst games ever made in there, I reckon. Oh, don't hang back. Which one's the worst game ever made? Wii Sports. Warzone and Attitude are not good, are they? I've talked at length on this show about those games. They are... God, they're (laughs) terrible. Yeah, they should never have been made. Well, Warzone, fool me once, shame on you. Attitude, fool me twice, shame on me. He has listed the prices of some of these games, though, and that's not bad, is it? I would give you 50p to take Warzone and Attitude Retro Collector Ray, you you bought Warzone, shame on you. You bought Attitude, part of the problem. What's next? Uh, Dream Collections has a boot full of various stuff and they've just put come in soon. You've got some Coca-Cola. Odario, Ogni, no, no, Tanto, no, no. Copalo, Qualci, Vidgaccio, Un Grande Pesca. Por favor. Scroll to the right. Yes. There's more pictures. It's revealed. It's like you a, didn't it's even like need a surprise. You Spanish to know this. You just got to swipe right. Interesting. What are they down there? Are they little cart holders or disket holders? They look like some kind of retro uh, floppy disk holders. They do, and they're nicotine stained as well, like all things from that era should be. No retro bright here. He has got that is a boot. Well, that is a boot to rival the big man himself. Look down there, look. Tara Jaguar. Oh, yeah. Box complete Jaguar. Sharaban. He likes to fight Sharaban. I've heard he goes down the Wagner Norses around closing time and likes to swim. Trained by Sensei Rios himself as the very well. The thing is, anyone that gets tra- trained by Sensei Rios and then goes out and uses those in real life, their fists have become illegal weapons. If yeah. Sharaban uses They could lose those, their martial arts licence. Exactly. If he get, gets, gets fruity, he's had a couple of uh, pear ciders, he throat chops the barman. That's going to land him in... What's PCSO Ross Kemp going to say about that? He will unleash hell. He will unleash hell. His words, not mine. Uh, but that's enough to strike fear into anybody. Well, though. moving on, Ozcat TV uh, has picked up uh, Mario Maker 2, which uh, I've ordered myself. So it looks to me like to he's going to stream Mario Maker 2, Tom. Yeah, that'd be cool to watch. He's, he's picked a good game to get behind. Um, so, yeah, go check out his Twitch and YouTube channels. Um, Winner of the Frere stream. Roche, Tom. Brad Bash Gaming. He's oh, picked yeah. up the third-rate Bionicle game. He's got... Ghost Recon 2. <laughs> also, Bon Jovi, Lost Highway, and uh, The Wizard of Oz. I wow. don't know whether that's the soundtrack or the film. Do you think that's Brad Bash Gaming's hand just to the left there? Do you think that's the hand that's reached for the Frere Roche? I don't know. Could be. Let us know. Let us know. (laughs) Here he is, cooking up a storm. (laughs) I love it. Every week, without fail, Daddy Zilla's found... Oh, Daddy Zilla, no, me and you have just fallen out because all the Tombola prizes are gone and you've got Lord of the Rings up on the cooker top. Deary me. 3.57 in the morning or 3.57 in the afternoon. Daddy Zilla rocks all ends of the 24-hour clock. He certainly does. Uh, next up, we've got Welsh Game Hunter. Uh, he's picked up Aladdin on the Mega Drive. Good hey, a lot game. of new content just dropping today. Yeah. Uh, he's got... Um, got a couple of Star Wars toys as well. He's got an Ugn out there and a Death Star droid, I believe. If I've got that wrong, let me know. But I'm pretty oh, sure... Oh, those Star Wars fans. I they do got, not forgive. I haven't got it... Well, that's why we were absolutely crucified with the Star Wars episode. Not even one mention of the word Star Wars, is it? Really? If you want to prove whether that's right or wrong, listeners, you've got to go check it out. Uh, the Barber Who Games, on a, a very jazzy couch, has got himself uh, some PlayStation original games. He's got some games for a Panasonic 3DO console as well. Do you know what? You know that couch? Yes. If the Barber Who Games cuts that couch up and turns that couch into a pair of tartan trousers, he will be top of the town. He can move in the bunker. Can he? Yeah. Worth it, I'd say. Uh, We hear his name rattle out with that great piece in the feature, but he's only gone and crawled like a snake into Stingray's boot. What's he got here, Tom? 
Got a right selection there, hasn't he? Uh, my oh, yeah. gaming-related goodies for his 40th birthday today. Happy birthday, Mark. Doesn't look a day over 39. Do you know what? Mark, his middle name's Garage, his last name's Gamers. He couldn't have come up, you know, his parents didn't know about YouTube, didn't really know about gaming, but they named him right that day, didn't they? I wonder if he's got the dots on his birth certificate. It's quite clearly dot there. Yeah. Garage dot Gamers. So he's uh, picked up Retro Gamer magazines, uh, well, or been bought as a gift. Very nice and thoughtful. Very nice, and some other... Uh, Gaming related, like a tap. PlayStation flask. There, that's pretty cool. Uh, got some great T-shirts. Jurassic Park, like original logo one. That's cool. I'm uh, Goonies. Gaming, I'm gaming. Don't disturb socks. Mm. All the rage for the gamer girls. Mark Garage Gamers. Yeah, doing the man version. Good man. Uh, he's got a Goonies T-shirt there with Chunk. Well, doing the truffle shuffle. Well. We need to make sure we double check with Stingray that he's got the 4K Goonies at Mark Garage Doc Games. Sequel, remember? It's a sequel. If anyone can get you it, he can. Yeah. Knowing our third rate Hokey Cokey show, we're probably going to claim it's got Saria McCallum in it. <laughs> video game, video underscore game underscore collect underscore wolves. You're not going to shout that quickly if he's jumping in front of a bus, are you? Crikey, he'd be dead by the time he finished his name. Just in case you weren't sure, he's been and got himself a 25-piece collector set of Simpsons toys. They look great. Um, Pokemon card. Fragile Dreams on the Wii. Something tells me that's a good pickup. Well, that's a rare game. I bet you pen a pound to a penny. I'll scroll down. Got that for a pound. Bargain. Unbelievable. Uh, I always say. Next up, we're we skipping Rad Bash because he's had a shout-out already. Well, you won the Tom Bowler. Uh, Finn's the gamer, we'll do him because he's a good lad, isn't he? Uh, PS2, uh, Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness. I don't think that was received very well, was it, back in the day? No, it um, was received as well as HIV. And a dual shock <laughs> controller with it and also a red memory card. It looks to me like the manager of CEX has been taking home power leads and aerial leads and controllers. He has. Something tells me... He's been offloading consoles to Stingray Tom. Yeah. Sold a scene. <laughs> Wheeler dealer. Uh, Mark Twigo. New name to the yeah, show. Welcome, name. Mark Twigo. He's got a really cool N64 uh, collection there. And unlike the game last week, who posed it on Gravel Tom, he's got the right controller for the console. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute savage. Um, he's got a plethora of uh, coloured controllers there. I've got that bag, that carry bag. Have you? Yeah. He's got Lilac Wars, that, the box that came bundled with the Rumble Pack. That's, he, that's cool. He's also got them splayed out on the floor like a, a young lass hoping to break into a modelling career. He's got it <laughs> laid out on a magazine with the, looks like the loose cart and the uh, Rumble Pack, Tom. Hang on a minute. Mm. Zoom in. Man's got himself immense amount of quality. He's gone and got himself Jet Force Gemini. Pilot wings. Well, some good mm. stuff in there, Tom. Some real yeah. juicy. Oh. But he's a dirty dog, isn't he? Why? He's only got himself the Nintendo X64 uh, A to Z of cheats. Well. Much like yourself. I'm surprised you were drawn to that when he's got the Gamester memory card with that dodgy looking <laughs> free four LED light bar. <laughs> hey, I don't, want myself. don't you dare save on anything other than block one if you ever want to retrieve your save, Tom, because <laughs> once past two, three and four, it's a no man's land. There must be game ghosts lost in there up and down the UK. Uh, Retro Visions. They've got some uh, NES games, Rambo, um, a Master System Double Dragon, copy of Double Dragon, SNES Lost Vikings 2. Save New York. And some Atari other stuff Bowl, there. Game Boy Matty! Little man, back on air. He's gone and got himself, it looks to me, like he's been to the shops. He Game... looks a fan of Toy Story he has. 4, he's doesn't he? He's up that new thing. I don't know what his Sporky, name is. Sporky, is it? Sporky, Forky. Call him what you like. Game Boy Matty brandishing it close to the camera. Bro fist. He's very happy. He's Bro his, fist. his Batman uh, booster seat as well. Mm, that's very cool. cool. Yeah. That's very like the one that you get when you come in the Twingo with me and Mumsu. 
<laughs> Done up like a kipper. <laughs> Little Devil 71, welcome to the party, pal. He's coming here with Die Hard Trilogy. If you want a lick, a link, if you don't, if you want a slick link, don't come to me because I'll call no. it a lick and it'll all just fall on its face like an embarrassing turn. Oscat TV, you've had your Mario make a shout out, so moving on. So you give him another one. Yep, seamless. Sharaban, back with some PS3 games and PS4 games. Don't just say just PS3 and PS4 games. Sharaban, as always, plays the harp to my heart like no other human being. Sharaban, infamous games, Tom. Infamous. Never played them. Oh, God. Stuck in the pass lane. Looks like he's going on holiday. But much like stuck in the pass lane, he can't go anywhere. Not even the toilet without a copy of Outrun on handheld. There's a man who loves his Outrun. Next up, uh, Radbash Gaming. The man who cannot be named ran off with a Frere Rocher, but looks like he's snagged himself some goofy lounge pants. Some Red golf- Steel 2 on the Wii. That was a good game. Tom, Much better than the it first It may have one. been a good game, but I feel it probably pales into significance against Star Trek Encounters on the PS2. My tongue really? in my cheek there. Don't, don't get too serious. Those dodgy-looking Disney Infinity Amiibos, again, <laughs> about as popular as uh, Cold Saw, and it looks like he's picked himself up <laughs> like a DS. <laughs> uh, Mark Try Twigger. Try laughing all, all episode and finally getting pulled out of the woodwork by saying Cold Saw. Mark Twiggo. Uh, he got named himself, himself a... after Mumsy's car. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sunset Riders, Tom. You know, this is slowly becoming the best part of the show. No wonder all the fans skip straight to it. Surely. Bro- Brock, Brock the, the 80s, 80s dude. dude. It's Brock Lesnar. Well, much like the Brock Lesnar has Paul Heyman talk for him, Brock the 80s dude has us talk for him. And he's gone and scored a mega haul. He's got Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime there. I remember when Rodimus Prime used to be an insult. You Rodimus Prime. Obviously, that's really? on Tom. Bigger boys who got into Transformers. He didn't know what they were until Michael Bay. He has been to the Stingray's boot, though, hasn't he, with that selection of uh, VHS uh, children's cartoons? Holy mother of God. Is that what they are? Yeah. Is. Ghostbusters, Turtles, Pingu. What's the other ones? Funny Bones, Bigfoot, Mad Scientist, uh, TMNT... Thundercats, Ghostbusters, real Ghostbusters, as he says, and Buzzy the Funny Crow. Not one I've heard of, Brock. Nice haul. You're probably not listening, but nice haul. Keep skipping, because I've mentioned it when I saw it (laughs) earlier. He's got a Ghostbusters 2 Slimer bag that should be enough to set everyone's jaw on the floor. I would sell Tom into slavery to get that. Um, He's also got, oh no, this is Mark Twiggo again. We've skipped back to him. He's got a Master System 2 uh, and a selection of Mega Drive games and Master System games. The Desert, uh, like the Desert, Jungle and Urban Strike series. May I, let's refer to them as the Strike series. series. Yeah, I like what you said. Sounds doing, better. Though. Yeah, much easier to say. Next up, Retro Collector Ray with the ominous Game Gear uh, with a He's TV a, tuner. Yeah, I mean, Let us know if you can still pick anything up on that. We can in the village. We still get calendar, can. the, calendar news from 1985. <laughs> it must be bouncing off the hill and back round again. Uh, Dreams Collection. New name to the show? Yeah. Let's follow him. Done it live, Tom. He's built himself a stack of GameCubes. But look at his face. He can't quite believe that it's that high. That tower of destruction. He just, look at him. He's very happy with himself. Dream Collections underscore Retro Games. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the family. Nice of you to make yourself known to us there. Crispy Video Game Journey. Wow. Is that another new name? I've heard Crispy Video Game Journey before, I think. If I'm wrong, let me know. Picked up some dreadful titles there. Well, he's picked up your favourite, as we mentioned in the, in the bit. He's, he's got oblivion, so you should be well happy. Wants a seamless yet natural transition from wandering to gameplay. Yeah, doesn't think oblivion's a good game. What a strange man he is. Sharaban, Crash Bandicoot collection. Very nice. Ozcat. Mario he's Maker had his one. Mario Maker twice now. How can you now? say that? When Third time. Sharaban's every second picture got <laughs> 
Um, and then there's us doing some yeah. shameless self promotion. Third rate hokey cokey podcast, slapping Stingray's boot for a hope for a mention on a third rate hokey cokey podcast. Gets a bit desperate, but there you go. Crispy video game journeys, just been buying all sorts of games. Thing is, though, he's a stickler for quality, so he's managed to get himself a copy of Haze on the PS3. That's a, whew, that's a, that's an interesting game. But another, there's a belter in there though, because he saved the day. He's got Resistance too. IA Retro Gamer Dad looks like he's picked himself up some Assassin's Creed. He's not too sure which side of the Corleone family is on though, so he's double backed. He's Mafia Two, but he's got the Godfather Two as well. Doesn't know quite <laughs> how to play it, so he's playing <laughs> both of them off against each other. Harvey oh, Retro, ooh, ooh, six button pad. Like to see that. Uh, got himself Terminator on the Mega Drive as well. Fiendishly difficult game. Sharaban, you're not getting any more shout-outs, I'm afraid. Oh, and you've done... Keep going, though, because I don't know if we mentioned this last week. Daddy Zilla, but look in the corner. There's a sneaky little Devin Zilla just popping his head around the corner. That is from last week, and that takes that's us... That's then, Tom. If that's the second back. time that we've seen Devin Zilla, that's the turn of the wheel. That's back to where it all began. In the boot for our listeners. Don't forget to hashtag Stingray's boot or email us for your pickups to be read out on air. Tom. He's not been that busy this week. Looks like Fence the Game has eaten into his illicit video game piracy, Tom, because there's not much in the boot. There's not much in the boot. But it's time. I think most of his VHSs have gone to that uh, Stingray's boot hashtag we saw. Did Tom, you, you, this is almost like a holy text. Continue. Do you want to do it this week? No, I'd forget it. Up skittle the apple cart, listeners would be upside down, sort of thing that turns them into... I ain't got enough meat. room for the tattoos. Well, it's time for a peek on that. Rather interesting note. The most tattooed man in the village has no space even for an ampersand on his knuckle anymore. He's had the show's contact details scrawled all over his body and gums. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot. What's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle for Endor this week? These are the new release highlights for the week July 1st to July 7th, 2019. Listeners, these are out on digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed but could be region dependent. Tom. We've wheeled out the sacred text, but the big man himself hasn't wheeled out. Maybe he's not going to come with it. Wait, what's that? Here he is. And guess who's riding shotgun with him? Young Finster Wayne. Gamer. Finster Gamer? <laughs> Screams up the drive, Tom, like a bat out of hell. What's Finster Gamer doing here? Looks like he's shuffling contraband around in the back, <laughs> peeling off CEX labels <laughs> and looking all mysterious. <laughs> He's doing the throat chop to me. He's symbolising he doesn't want me to mention he's in the car. <laughs> Looks like he might lose that CEX franchise quicker than we thought. Tom, the squeaks have stopped ages ago. The boots popped. Stingray's looking... Mm, he's looking angry, but he's looking a little bored that we're wasting his time. Better dip in. First up... Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered Edition mm. out on the Switch July 2nd. Ah! Set 50 years. Featuring the immortal John Marston, set 50 years before the climactic event. Is it? Yeah. The voice actor is him. No, ju- just remastered. Oh. To be honest, they know about this game. They had it on PS2. It came out on it's PS2. It's the same before. thing. It's the same game. July 2nd. Stranger Next Things up, 3. To tie in with the release of the new series. Stranger Things 3, the series on Stingray, Tom. So we've got that to watch. Put that. To it's got Series on. 4 on as well, though. Comes coupled with all the kids' favourite Goonies 2, which I'm going to get out so Mark, not Garage, not Game. I can't have it. That's a bit harsh. We we'll knock him off a copy. We'll do him. Yeah. No, because you're already in trouble with Stingray because you went in the Never Never book last week to get me a game. Yes. Tricked you into it, didn't he? He doesn't look happy you've brought that up. He owns half your soul, technically. Anyway, yeah. we've got the series. We've got Blue. We've got Goonies on Stingray, 4K. Stranger Things 3, the game, though, Tom. PC, PS4, Xbox, Switch, July 4th. One summer can change everything. Better bring a friend. Stranger Things 3, the game, is the official companion game to Season 3 of the hit original series. Play through familiar events from the series 
while also uncovering never-before-seen quests, character interactions and secrets. This adventure game blends a distinctively retro art style, 16-bit cheap, with modern gameplay mechanics to deliver nostalgic fun with a fresh new twist. Just like in the show, teamwork is at the heart of Stranger Things, the game. Fans can team up in two-player local co-op to explore the world of Hawkins, solve puzzles and battle the emerging evils of the Upside Down as one of the 12 beloved characters of the show. Surely that game should be 8-bit if it was set in the era it's film, like, or... Tom ever a stickler for historical accuracy. Yeah. Damn Not it. getting that. <laughs> Due to that reason. I haven't even considered a mummy mummy. We we slaughtered Red Faction Gorilla. That's my mummy mummy. <laughs> it's it. Grab onto something <laughs> desperately before the show ends. Next up we've got What Remains of Edith Evie. This is rehearsed. Blah, 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 blah. This is rehearsed. Edith don't Finch. Uh, on the Switch, July 4th. Oh. Pull Ex- yourself up a seat. <laughs> this is gonna be a bloodbath. <laughs> Wow. Off you, you lay go. down the gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> Explore the Finch family history and try to figure out why Edith Finch is the last one in her family left alive. Winner of Best Game at the 2018 BAFTA Game Awards, as well as Best Narrative Awards at the GDC 2018 mm. Choice Awards, Ms. 2018 Brilliant. SXSW Gaming Awards, and the Game Awards 2017. He's out of breath. <laughs> What Remains of Edith Finch is a collection of strange tales about a family in Washington State. As Edith, you'll explore the colossal Finch house, searching for stories as she explores her family history and tries to figure out why she's the last one in her family left alive. Each story you find lets you experience the life of a new family member on the day of their death, with stories ranging from the distant past to the present day. The gameplay and tone of the stories are varied as the Finches themselves. The only constants are that each is played from a first-person perspective and that each story ends with the family, that family member's death. Ultimately, it's a game about what it feels like to be humbled and astonished by the vast and unknowable world around us. Created by Giant Sparrow, the team behind the first-person painting game, The Unfinished Swan. I think, you know, it got a bit wobbly in the end there, but um, best narrative... Narrative or whatever, I can't. I'm nitpicking. <laughs> Flawless. Next week you're doing the sting. Next week we're swapping job roles. Are we? I want to be the colour commentator. The king to my JR. Yeah. I you want... could only dream. I could. Which means I've been thrown Wonder Blade on the PC. Heck, why? Why not? All caution thrown to the wind. This is my mummy, mummy. July 4th. <laughs> PC. 486 gaming PCs may apply here. What are you waiting for? Grab that trusty weapon of your... <laughs> oh, Tom. Oh, what are you waiting for? Grab that trusty weapon of yours. Free the princess and save the world all before breakfast. What do you get when you cross a whimsical adventure? Humorous characters. It was meant to be funny. I was right. Insert you... laughter track then. Yeah. Oh, Tom, I wish we could afford one. We will. Oh, that would be my dream. Laughter track. Yeah. That would be great. An awesome experience you won't soon forget. Looks like you've pulled a belter out, Tom. Yeah. No, I'd... This needs to be a random VHS. Oh, does it? Mm. Uh, the Adventures of Teddy Ruxpin. Well, that's good. Yeah. I think I... I in fact, my... After Sea of Solitude, I will actually do... Nothing so far has been my mummy mummy. What I pull out after Sea of Solitude is going to be my mummy mummy. And then you okay. can take us to the bridge. Uh, yeah, this would be my mummy mummy choice for this week. Sea of Solitude out on the PC, PS4 and Xbox. Uh, Shall I do ju- the, I'll tell you what. Shall I do the dark text and you do the light text? Can if you wish. What are you waiting for? Grab that trusty weapon of yours, free the princess, and have we not had this already? Let's ignore that one. Don't trust me <laughs> with a keyboard. <laughs> an emotional journey. It's an emotional journey. Go on a nuisance and intimate adventure experience <laughs> through the mind of Kay as she struggles to overcome her inner loneliness. Help Kay see below the surface of her own heart and guide her through her sea of solitude. A marvellous world... As her journey unfolds, Kay's dark and stormy environment begins to change. Water levels rise and fall, uncovering new parts of the flooded city and surfacing unique challenges. 
And this has to be our most average show. Tom, my mummy mummy <laughs> is Goodnight Sweetheart, starring Nicholas Lindhurst. The oh. story of a time-travelling Gary Sparrow, the TV repairman that journeys back to World War Two and lives a life of All iniquity. those catch-ups of him watching it on UK Gold TV have paid off. Yes. So that's my mummy mummy. He now has the full collection. What's your mummy mummy? It was that, Sea of Solitude. Oh, the one I desecrated, okay. So to round off and so Stingray can drive away sand sound effect because from we this, are the cheapest third-rate podcast going. From this car crash that Maybe has occurred. Maybe to keep it a little bit more in context, Fince the Gamer pushes him silently away. But before he goes, I grab this from the boot. They are billions on Xbox out July 5th. They are billions as a Steam... What are you waiting for? Grab that trusty weapon of yours. Free <laughs> Save the world all before breakfast. I do it a disservice. Build and defend colonies to survive against the billions of the infected that seek to annihilate the few remaining living humans. Can hum- humanity survive after the freaker apocalypse? See what I've done there? Mm-hmm. They're freakers on our show. From now until the end of time. <sighs> if we've freakers. still got any listeners after this, Tom... Let me ask you this question. What are you hoping to play? Uh, Mario Maker 2 is ordered and hopefully be picking up over the weekend, so that's what I'll be playing. Nice. Now, I promised you I was going to get a copy of Judgment. Mm. Now, the only place I was able to escape from the bunker was London. And copies of Judgment were coming in at, with the exchange rate. Four and a half the million, London exchange rate. Four and a half million pounds. <laughs> So I forwent, I forgo that. That's cheap for down there. I oh, know. I did think about that, and I think I had a two p off game voucher as well. So things are looking <laughs> tasty. But that copy of Judgment can be had for a lot less up here in the Northern Territories, uh, which is where I aim to purchase it. So I will get that. I made a solemn, solemn promise, and I probably might end up doing in about twenty, thirty years once a finished day's gone. I'll do a love, leave, or lay. Yep. What else am I hoping to play? Days gone. Going to carry on. I forgot to tell you, I've been playing MLB again. I'm a very naughty boy. Write the theme tune, sing the theme tune, play the game. That's what I do. Uh, and apart from that, I think that might be it, Tom, you know. I'll dust off a PS2 title. Something yeah. weird that no one's ever heard of for no apparent reason. Um, the question I've got for you is, what are you hoping to play? We've done that. Yep. Let's, uh... What game were you hoping to play? Mario Maker 2. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's because usually I, I hit you up at the start of what I've been playing this week was just such a vast array of games. There's a long list, that was. Yeah. And this week you're just going to play Mario Maker 2, that's it? Yeah, that's me. No. Building me levels. No, or... or... I'll be plugging all my levels next week, so don't worry. Yeah, but you're not going to mention... Mm, or... Mm, 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 no, mm. they've been mentioned enough. Or... Mm, mm, mm. No. None of that. None of that. And on that... Promises for next week that I will endure to keep. No mention of and on that the bingo sacred games. sacred promise, we pop ourselves off, because that's all we've got time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. See you, Tom. See you, mate.